Hello, my name is Carol Johnson, the Project Coordinator for the East Riding Transforming Local Infrastructure Project, TLI for short. You may be aware of the project and its activities, but you might find it useful to have an overview of the background of the TLI. The project was government funded through Cabinet Office, with funds administered and monitored by the Big Lottery. Applications for TLI funding was restricted to infrastructure service providers. Only one bid in each local authority area could be submitted. So the work pre the start of the project involved bringing together interested parties to decide, decide on the project specification and write and submit the bid. HWRCC was designated by interested parties to act as the lead host for the project. The bid was submitted by HWRCC at the end of October 2011. In February 2012, we were advised that the East Riding bid had been successful. Only one out of every three bids was successful across the country. In the Humber sub-region, Hull and East, North East Lincolnshire were also successful. The project has been running since the 31st of March and will run till the end of September 2013. The project is being delivered by key infrastructure organisations who provide support to voluntary and community groups in the East Riding of Yorkshire. The East Riding TLI is being delivered through a partnership arrangement between the following organisations. Humber and Wales Rural Community Council, HWRCC, East Riding Voluntary Action Services, AIRLAS, Humber Learning Consortium, HLC, and Community Economic Regeneration Team, SET. In addition to these partners, the following community hubs have delivered elements of the project on a subcontract basis. The Shores at Wythensea, the Bridlington Resource Centre and the Courtyard in Gill. The overall aim of the project was to strengthen the leadership of civil society organisations, previously known as voluntary community sector organisations, and improve their access to high quality, redeveloped support training and volunteer brokerage. Through the TLI project, CSOs would benefit from new partnerships across the sector, which would enable them to improve their commercial focus, enabling them to respond to market challenges. Each of the delivery partners took a lead on a specific outcome of the project, with HWRCC taking the responsibility for contract management, monitoring and evaluation of the project. There was also a corporate social responsibility element that ran through most of the project's outcomes and activities. This involved making or developing better links between the voluntary, public and private sectors. The projects delivered against the following outcomes. Outcome 1 was led by Airbus, who have worked in conjunction with the three community hubs to deliver this outcome. This involved the redevelopment of the volunteer brokerage service to provide a responsive locally based service. This has been delivered through the three community hubs in Goole, Withensea and Bridlington. The hubs have worked as a subcontractor of the project to deliver the locality based volunteer brokerage services supported by Airbus. The brokerage services match those wishing to volunteer with voluntary groups who require volunteers. They have worked together to gain an accreditation, a volunteer accreditation map developed by the Leeds CBS, which is based on elements of the Volunteer in England accreditation model. Airbus has set up an employee supported volunteer brokerage scheme. The brokerage provides a service that matches businesses who want to develop partnerships with volunteer groups in their community looking for support. This may be a single project like painting a village hall or provision of a service but will build a long-term relationship between the voluntary, private and public sectors. In addition, Airbus have set up a trustee pool which has involved recruiting of volunteers from the public and private sectors to sit on trustee boards of local voluntary and community groups. Outcome 2 was led by HLC. They have developed a single training and support portal which has streamlined and improved access to the knowledge of training opportunities on offer from the public, private and voluntary sector. The portal provides a single point where anyone wishing to access training can find out what is available from all sectors. It provides voluntary sector organisations with one-to-one -one diagnostic health checks to identify any areas of training they require. 
They've worked with voluntary community groups to develop quality standards within their organisations to improve their efficiency, effectiveness and improve quality of the services they deliver. Delivering a high quality service can enable organisations to generate the much needed funds they need to survive in these turbulent times. Outcome 3 was delivered by CERT. And they were, to, they were tasked to develop, a sustainable, to dis, de, develop sustainable partnerships between voluntary and community sector and public and private sector to enable VCSOs to make the most of opportunities and respond to market-based challenges. Outcome 4 was led by HWRCC in partnership with EPAS. It involved a rationalisation programme which amalgamated two infrastructure organisations, back office and senior management functions, to reduce core costs of, to reduce the core costs for both organisations and, and enable them to improve and develop new service, service delivery opportunities. Progress on the outcomes today include Look, the locality-based volunteer brokerages have been set up in the, uh, the following community hubs, the Courtyard and Gould Resource Centre in Bridlington and Shores at Wigginsey. They are providing a volunteer brokerage service, matching potential volunteers with local opportunities. Opportunities have been advertised and volunteers match. All the three of the community hubs have achieved a volunteer accreditation mark. Airbus have set up an employee-supported volunteer brokerage scheme Brokers has engaged organisations from the private and public sector matching of local businesses with voluntary groups in that community. Airbus has set up a trustee pool and recruited volunteers from the public and private sector. Trustees from the pool have now been matched in place with local voluntary and community groups. Outcome 2, HLC. HLC has developed a single training and support portal which is called the Training Gateway. The portal includes private, public and third sector training opportunities on offer from providers. Private sector companies on the portal include Total Training Solution, Genesis Training, TR Revel Companies Limited. Total Training Solutions offered a free place to, to community sector organisations on the diploma in the leadership and management course as part of the CSR activities. 0800 health plans have been added to the portal, giving access to telephone support from a range of national organisations. Online resources have also been added. A discussion forum introduced to facilitate dialogue between providers and beneficiaries has also been added. To date, 850 courses have been advertised on the portal and there have been 411 viewings of the course calendar. 19 accessing health plans and 36 training provider sites visited today. Links to TLI Partner Organisations website are also on, to be found on there. They have also provided 25 voluntary and community sector organisations with one-to-one -one support or diagnostic health checks to identify areas of training required. They have promoted the benefits to voluntary and community groups of developing high quality to, of developing quality standards within their organisations to improve their efficiency, effectiveness and improve the quality of services they deliver. Direct support to, has been given to three organisations to en enable them to adopt quality systems. Outcome 3 set. The development of the sustainable partnerships between the voluntary and commu community sector and public and private sector. This involved the establishment of partnerships which are all now well established. During the first quarter, meaningful dialogue with key commissioners and procurement staff in the East Ryan of Yorkshire Council took place. As a result of a social volume workshop, um, increased awareness of civil society organisations um, was, uh, was, um, um, was achieved. The development of a suite of tools and resources to increase their ability to enter into tender and procurement processes was produced. En engagement with private sector took place using existing business networks, web seminar, LinkedIn and social media. Private sector or organisations engaged include Premier Trading Limited, Sanderson Wilson Accountants, Heritage Learning Centre. 
CERT has concentrated its efforts on the development of initial sharp, sharp opportunities as a means to establish a relationship between the private sector organisations and individual civil society organisations. In light of the current economic climate, the delivery model envisaged has had to be adapted. Many organisations have accessed private and public sector resources that have been made available. As CERT are partners in all three TLI projects within the Humber hum subregion, they are liaising with neighbouring providers of similar services to avoid duplication and achieve better delivery models. Outcome 4, HWRCC. The rationalisation programme has involved the setting up of a formal partnership arrangement between HWRCC and Airbus. As a result of this agreement, the senior management function for HWRCC and Airbus has been amalgamated and Penny Brown took over as CEO of both organisations. The new partnership arrangements have resulted in improved service delivery and allowed us to utilise skills and capacity from within both organisations to deliver contractual activities. The amalgamation of the two organisations, um, back office and senior management functions, has reduced core function costs for both organisations and will enable improved and new service de delivery opportunities in the future. A review of the finance and back office functions was undertaken at HWRCC. The review recommended major changes in the delivery of the finance functions and this has resulted in the outsourcing of some of these functions and a reduction in the core cost of the organisation. HWRCC has closed its Driffield office, reducing its offices in the East Riding from two to one. Further reduction in core costs have come from the reduction of offices. Airbus have reduced their offices from two to one. The next phase was to identify a suitable property within the East Riding for HWRCC and Airbus to co-locate. Three areas have been identified as potential sites. This element has of the project has proved difficult, but we are still exploring um, a couple of potential properties. Both boards have committed to co-locate by August 2014, despite the TLI project coming to an end in September 30. HWRCC had, through the process, identified another property within Howden that has reduced significantly our costs. So we will be moving to this property within the next month. I hope this brief overview of the project has given you a flavour of what the project has developed and delivered over the last 18 months. You will be hearing in more detail from some of the partners from the TLI. But if you require any further information, please feel free to contact me. As this is our first virtual conference we have held, I would be grateful if you could complete the online survey so that we can assess if this is an effective model of delivery for conferences in the future. Given the current economic climate in which we are working, which for many groups has meant less resources by way of travel budgets and capacity. Thank you.